the sparkle of those tradition-rich blue and gold uniforms, the glint of those golden helmets, the sound of 59,000 partisan fans in perennially sold-out Notre Dame Stadium. That's all part of what has made football and Notre Dame an extra special combination since 1887. From the days of Newt Rockney to the current Jerry Faust era, Notre Dame football is one of the most widely anticipated autumn experiences anywhere. The 1983 Fighting Irish season would be no different. Ranked among the preseason top ten by both wire services, the Irish approached the Purdue opener with unbridled anticipation. Alan Pinkett wasted no time setting the tone, scampering 35 yards on the fifth play from scrimmage. That set up a nine-yard scoring pass from Blair Keel to Greg Bell for a quick Notre Dame advantage. A third down completion to veteran flanker Mike Favorite. And another run by the ever elusive Bell set up the second of four touchdowns for the junior tailback. Following a Mike Johnston field goal, Chris Smith got into the act for 18 yards. And Bell cemented the issue for a third time. Mark Bavaro's first career reception produced six points as the relentless Irish claimed a 31 to nothing halftime margin. Notre Dame's offensive superiority continued after the intermission. Pickett recalls the exhilaration of the season opening Irish success. We went into the game knowing that we had a good team and knowing that we had the potential to put a lot of points on the board. And it seems like everything just went our way and it, it was a big ego lift for us to know that everything we tried worked. Notre Dame's defense forced seven Purdue turnovers, but Mike Golick delivered a word of caution despite the easy Irish win. We were all pretty happy, pretty excited about it. I think the fan reaction was a lot more. They were really looking toward the high expectations of the, the preseason rankings, but the players were very happy about the win, but we knew that we had 10 more games to go yet. The fourth-ranked Irish hoped for more of the same against Michigan State, and the early offensive signs were good ones. Chris Smith's burst for 12 yards helped set up Notre Dame's initial touchdown. Mark Bavaro's diving two-yard grab put the Irish on top. Greg Bell's 50-yard scamper behind Tim Scannell and Greg Golick allowed Notre Dame to keep pace. The Spartans' Dave Urema put the visitors up again. Mike Golick's defense earned one more shot for the Irish, who made it 21 apiece at the half on Joe Howard's tiptoe catch. Notre Dame's defense sparkled in the second half with Mike Golick. Then Stacy Turan. And finally, Tony Ferjanic making the big plays. But an Irish turnover paved the way for the Spartan win. 
and 100-yard gains by both Pinkett and Bell weren't enough. Notre Dame's nationally televised visit to Miami dawned on a definite note for the defense. Senior linebacker Rick Naylor thwarted the Hurricanes' passing game on the first Miami possession. A Pat Ballage hit allowed Mike Kovaleski to claim yet another turnover. With the Irish running game held in check, quarterback Blair Keel went to Milt Jackson and then Mark Bavaro. Even the efforts of rookie Steve Berline, who moved Notre Dame impressively, couldn't keep the Irish from averting their first shutout in five years in the 20 to nothing Miami win. A journey to Colorado's Buffalo country put the keys to the Irish offense in the hands of freshman Steve Berline, as Jerry Faust plotted a reversal of the two-game slide. Alan Pinkett followed the script by circling 36 yards on the fourth play from scrimmage. He completed the dominating drive by bursting the final 10 yards. A picture-perfect flea flicker to Joe Howard set up more Irish points. Mike Johnston complied by nailing a 21-yard field goal. The Irish defense was just as intimidating. Mike Golick thinks he knows why. We were just going to relax and uh, play the type of ball that, that we wanted to play. We just wanted to go out and intimidate people and just go have fun and play football for what it was to be played for. Fullback Mark Brooks got into the act on this 31-yard charge. Behind the blocking of all-star center Mike Kelly, Pinkett helped himself to some of his 132 rushing yards. And Chris Smith scampered 29 yards for a clinching touchdown. They made Jerry Faust's post-game meeting ever so much more enjoyable. The extra Irish intensity displayed itself on the very first play from scrimmage against Fired Up South Carolina, as Alan Pinkett sprinted left for 53 yards. That set up the first of three Mike Johnston field goals for a quick three to nothing advantage. A Steve Berline toss to Mark Bavaro put the visitors within striking distance. His third down throw to Chris Smith added 26 yards and six points. A Chris Brown interception return set up another field goal. A fumble recovery by Joe Johnson arranged yet a third. Then it was Alan Pinkett's tackle-breaking 50-yard scoring run with a Burline pass that effectively broke the game Coxbacks. The Irish harnessed the South Carolina veer with consummate ease. A Tony Ferjanic interception and a fourth down Mike Gann sack kept the Gamecocks out of range. An 18-yard Allen Pinkett rush set up a 37-yard rumble by Chris Smith.
Pinkett's two-yard scoring play capped off another dominating performance by the Irish. Seeking a third straight win in Notre Dame's fourth consecutive road game, the Irish defense put on an amazingly dominant display. Army managed only 159 total yards and just seven first downs. Freshman Mike Kovaleski and Troy Wilson picked off errant passes as the Irish allowed Army into their territory only once all afternoon. Greg Dingens and Mike Gann helped make life difficult for the cadet quarterbacks. Steve Berline's short passes to Mark Brooks and Alan Pinkett proved effective. Berline's poise on this 22-yard throw to Mark Bavaro earned especially high marks from the Irish coaches. Pinkett's 132 rushing yards and three touchdowns included a pair of extra effort 11-yard scoring runs. Blair Keel bowled his way over the goal line to ensure Notre Dame's first shutout win in two seasons. October 22nd marked the exact date Notre Dame sprung green jerseys on USC in 1977 in a key Irish win. And that historical fact wasn't lost on Jerry Faust. In a bit of psychological inspiration that proved made to order, the Irish again warmed up in traditional blue, only to re-emerge just prior to kickoff in their Kelly green tops. That extra adrenaline started pumping when Mike Golick recovered a fumble on the Trojans' first drive. Alan Pinkett seized the momentum with this perfectly lofted 59-yard toss to Mark Bavaro. Pinkett's nine-yard dash got him to the USC 11. And from there, he handed the Irish a 7-0 lead. Pinkett came right back for 11 more to set up the second Notre Dame score. The swivel hip sophomore did the honors once again. The first of a pair of Rick Naylor interceptions sent Trojan quarterback Sean Salisbury to the bench. Mike Johnston made it 17 to nothing with this 30-yarder. The defense took over from there. The Trojans switched quarterbacks, but that didn't bother Eric Dorsey, or Greg Dingens, or even Naylor, after John Autry tipped this pass. Mark Brooks got the Irish back into scoring position. And an 11-yard scoot by Pinkett made it 24 to nothing.
USC rebounded with one late touchdown. But Johnston's 39-yard boot at the end of the third period finalized the 27-6 margin. After five frustrating losses in a row to the Trojans, it was a satisfying afternoon of fun for the Irish, whatever the color of their jerseys. As Pinkett noted, I think we could have beaten them in T-shirts today. Now back in the nation's top 20, Notre Dame chose the aerial route in an effort to unseat the midshipmen of Navy. Steve Berline showed plenty of patience in throwing effectively to fullback Chris Smith. And three times to junior split end Joe Howard for 56 yards. A 67-yard march was capped by this acrobatic five-yard grab by Milt Jackson. Howard followed suit moments later by throwing to Jackson himself. The rest was left for Alan Pinkett, who won his personal battle with top-ranked rusher Napoleon McCallum of Navy. Pinkett scored twice in the second half and rushed for 121 yards compared to 92 for McCallum. Rookie flanker Alvin Miller displayed some of his potential on this end around for 19 yards. Notre Dame's nationally ranked defense did the rest. McCallum was held far below his 160 yard per game average and the Irish sack pack grounded the Navy quarterback on seven different occasions. Two sacks each by Mike Golick, Eric Dorsey and John Autry. A Troy Wilson interception sealed the verdict as the Irish put their fifth straight win on the board. Pittsburgh came to town with a four-game winning streak in a regionally televised matchup of major bowl hopefuls. Safety Dane Spielmaker did his best to help keep Panther signal caller John Conjemi under wraps. But Joe McCall's short run gave Pitt a two-touchdown lead. Alan Pinkett did his best to turn the tide. A spectacular series of receptions by Milt Jackson kept the Irish within striking distance. Panther interception at the goal line thwarted one Notre Dame march as rookie quarterback Steve Berline learned some valuable late season lessons. Blair Keel responded by throwing for 134 yards in the last five minutes of the game as the Irish fought doggedly to get back in contention. His nine-yard toss to Pinkett provided Notre Dame's only touchdown. Despite his two-point conversion throw to Pinkett, the Irish victory string snapped at five. Chili Beaver Stadium was the site of this year's matchup between Notre Dame and the defending national champion Nittany Lions of Penn State. Alan Pinkett had his own plan for combating the freezing conditions. Well, the philosophy that the offense uses is that 
Little Al runs through the line, who's about 5'9", 180 pounds, and the offensive linemen that are 6'6", 278, stand the defensive linemen up so they can't see me because I run so low to the ground anyway. And by the time they do see me, well, my quickness is supposed to take over. Uh, that's the philosophy we've used, but when we went down to Penn State, I sort of had to combine that philosophy with one of thermodynamics because it was awful cold outside. And I figured the more I ran, the warmer I would get. Steve Berline, who threw for 257 yards on this day, wasted little time getting the Irish into the swing of things. After consecutive completions to Milt Jackson and Joe Howard, this 52-yard strike to tight end Mark Bavaro set Pinkett up for an Irish scoring run. This one from 16 yards out made it 17 to 13 for Notre Dame. Penn State's passing game regained the lead in the fourth period. But Pinkett's fourth down sweep got it right back for the Irish at 30 to 27. When Pat Ballage recovered DJ Dozier's fumble in the final three minutes, a Notre Dame win looked assured. But Doug Strang's keeper with 19 seconds left ended all Irish dreams in a game in which both teams combined for 962 total yards. Notre Dame's finale against Air Force offered yet another defensive challenge. The Irish reacted well to the Falcon flexbone. Alan Pinkett keynoted the rushing attack with this 41-yard gain. Setting up this run that marked his 18th touchdown, a Notre Dame record. Greg Dingens continued the defensive assault while Pinkett's 37-yard excursion arranged for Notre Dame's tying points. Mike Johnston did the honors by booting this field goal from 37 yards away. Notre Dame's comeback was fueled by this 46-yard screen pass to Pinkett who would finish with 197 rushing yards. Blair Keel zeroed in on Milt Jackson for the go-ahead score. Keel provided a cushion with a 67-yard rocket to speedy Joe Howard. John Kirshner regained the lead for the Falcons. A blocked field goal abruptly ended the game, but the Irish were still headed for a postseason matchup against Boston College at the Liberty Bowl. The 25th annual Liberty Bowl promised to be a classic matchup. The Boston College Eagles, led by Mighty Might Doug Flutie, struck quickly on the first series of the game. But the Boston College kicker slipped, and Pat Ballage blocked the low extra point attempt to keep the score at 6 to nothing. Senior Blair Keel led the Irish right back down the field with some inspired running by Chris Smith and Alan Pinkett. Pinkett capped the 16-play drive with his dive over the center for the touchdown. Mike Johnston got the lead with his extra point boot. The defense, led by Tony Ferjanic, Stacy Turan, and Mike Golick, put on an impressive show.
They throttled the explosive Boston College offense with an aggressive attack that had the Eagles moving backwards. After Mike Golick blocked a punt and the Irish recovered on the six-yard line, Blair Keel took charge. The tri-captain fired a perfect strike to freshman Alvin Miller to put the Fighting Irish ahead by seven points. The defense hung tough on the next series, and Notre Dame marched 53 yards downfield. Future Heisman Trophy candidate Alan Pinkett scored his 20th touchdown of the season to give the Irish a 19-6 lead. But with Doug Flutie airing out the football, no lead can ever be considered truly comfortable. The Eagles flew right back down the field and capped the drive on a great catch by Gerard Phelan. However, Flutie slipped and threw wide on the two-point conversion. The seven-point Irish lead was secured by a John Autry sack late in the first half. As expected, the second half opened with Flutie's Air Express. Scott Gieselman grabbed a TD pass, but the Flutie to Gieselman connection fell short on the two-point try. The fate of the Liberty Bowl was put squarely on the shoulders of the Notre Dame defense, and they responded in picture-perfect fashion. Key plays by Stacy Turan, Mike Griffin, and Troy Wilson stopped the Boston College comeback tries. The 19-18 triumph ended the season on a definitely upbeat note. 100-yard games by both Alan Pinkett and Chris Smith, and a great night for the defense made this truly a team victory. For Notre Dame enthusiasts everywhere, it was a night to remember. Four seniors like Captains Blair Keel, Stacy Turan, and John Mosley, and classmates Neil Mawney, John Autry, Rick Naylor, Chris Brown, and Mike Shiner, the 1983 season ended their contribution to the legacy that is Notre Dame football. It is a legacy that includes so much more than just football, as Alan Pinkett so ably understands. I felt that Notre Dame was the epitome of a great school and that it offered the best of both worlds in academics and athletics. You had a nationally respected academic program combined with a nationally respected athletic program and I had not sold myself short thus far in my lifetime. I figured why I do it now. This 83 Irish team was a particularly young one with 17 underclassmen starting by year's end. For All-America tailback Pinkett and captain-elects Joe Johnson, Larry Williams, and Mike Golick, their biggest challenge is yet to come. It's the challenge of continuing that legacy that has made Notre Dame football one of the most amazing ongoing traditions in college athletics.